In this video, we'll be creating the foundation for a main menu. We'll have the ability to load up our first level and exit the game. This is a very simple blueprint. We'll be creating this so we can expand upon it in the future when I actually cover things like options menus, level select, upgrade menus, save and load functionality, and a bunch more different things in different videos. Because to create those things in a great way that doesn't feel clunky, it will take a lot of time and it will be a little bit too long to fit into one video. With that in mind, let's move into our editor and build out our basic main menu. Now we are in our editor, let's go and create a new scene. This is going to be of a user interface. So this is actually going to just be a control node. We're going to rename this to main underscore menu. And then we're going to save this into its own folder called main, main menu. And hit save. So now that we have our root node created, we are going to be adding a text direct. So we're going to here highlight our main menu, hit control A to add, and then we're going to add a texture rect. Now the texture rect is going to be anchored to the full screen. So up here, anchor presets, anchor full screen. And if you have a background of any kind that you actually want to add to this, you can. I'm going to be using up here, if I go to background, there is one specific tile, background 0010. So with this created, we have our background for our main menu. We now need to start adding the extra containers and things for our buttons, our title, and all of that. So let's first, uh, highlighting our main menu uh, node again, we're going to add a margin container. This is also going to be full size anchor. And in margin container, we're going to go down to theme override constants and give a 12 pixel margin to each edge border or each border of the screen right that way things don't kind of hit or touch the sides of the screen and it feels like it's actually in the game and not just kind of printed out onto the screen so inside of our margin container we're first going to add a vbox container now vbox containers will sort things vertically so going from top to bottom or up to down we want our vbox container to make sure our alignment is on beginning and then we'll go down to theme overrides, constants, and then you'll see this uh, button here for separation. We are going to give this a 60 pixel separation. And well, there's nothing on here for us to do separation with, right? This is where things get a bit fun. We're going to add another control node to the VBOX container. Now, this is going to do nothing. It's going to just act as a separator. Like so. So anything that goes beneath this will be well, separated, right? It kind of allows us to use the uh, separation for the VBOX container with only using one extra node. Meaning if I go control A, which we're going to do anyway, and we're going to add a label, we're going to call this game title. We are going to now go to the horizontal alignment center, vertical alignment center. You'll see uh, uh, you can see it. You'll see that this is now kind of pushed away from the top of the screen. Whereas if I put this above the separator, it's now kind of touching the edge of the top of the screen. We don't really want that. Using a separator or creating a node for a separator and then using it like in a VBox container and then using separation, we can kind of finally place this wherever we actually want to. So in this case, I'm saying 60 pixels is good, but it really is up to you and kind of what you want to do. Now, we're going to go down to our label. We're going to go into our theme overrides. We're going to go font sizes, and we will give this label a 64 pixel font size. Make it, you know, make, make it nice and big so it's uh, actually visible, and our, you know, anybody who plays the game will know this is what the game is. Now we're going to go into fonts. I'm going to add a new system font. I'm going to add an element for impact. Don't know why, I just tend to like using the impact font. It kind of just has a good blocky feel for little prototype games. Uh, we will then go up into constants. We're going to add an outline. Give it a 12 pixel outline for now. Go to colors, tick the outline box. 12 pixel seems a little bit too thin. Go to 24, feels better. 
add a little bit of shadow, and then you can change the offsets for the shadow as well. That might be a bit too much. Let's go and do six and six. A little bit too short. Eight and eight. Uh, let, let's uh, just remove the shadow. That'll do. So this is our kind of basic scene setup, right? We now need to add a couple uh, a couple of buttons to actually get our menu kind of functional and functioning. So we're going to collapse the uh, VBox container so we can see a little bit clearer. We're going to click our margin container. We're going to go Control A to add. We are then going to add a HBox container. So this is uh, like the VBox container. This is just for the horizontal positioning of things. This will be aligned center. And then inside of the HBox container, we are going to add one more VBox container. So you're going to start noticing we have containers and containers and containers and containers. This is my problem with uh, menus usually, is it gets a bit confusing on how you want to align things, but a little bit of uh, messing around, you can figure it, out, uh, figure it out. So for our VBox container, we want it to be aligned center. We then want to go and change the separation in our constants. I'm going to be using 18 pixel separation. Once again, this is uh, something you can kind of fine tune and tweak as you please. Then in our VBox container, uh, under our margin container, the one that has our title label, I'm going to duplicate the separator node and I'm going to pull it into the VBox container that we just created. Now, separators can be really, really kind of useful as just big blocks, right? So now let's go and add a button to our VBox container. Just a normal button. This one will be, we'll just name it button one. Apparently I forgot how to spell button. Here we go. So that's button one. Going to duplicate this button and then duplicate the separator and then pull the new separator between the two buttons. That separates our buttons a little bit and makes it feel a little bit better. Now, one thing you can do is if you would prefer to do this the kind of quick and simple way, the second button, you can go ahead and delete, go back to our normal button. And then if you scroll all the way down to our layout, you'll see these custom minimum sizes. Now, I like big buttons. Big buttons make me kind of you know, happy. So I'm going to give these a custom minimum size of 120 pixels and 32 pixels in the X and Y. Then I'm going to go down to our theme overrides, our fonts, new system font, pack string, add element, go to use impact, and then I'm going to scroll down to font sizes. Now font sizes is where things get a bit fun. I'm going to give this a 24 pixel font size. Now finally we can go back up to our button in the uh, scene menu. We can control D to duplicate it pull it below our separator. Those are our two buttons set up. In doing it this way, we can use uh, easy separation. We can add to this quite well, i.e. we could add a bunch more buttons for options menus, for uh, character select, level select, you know, a bunch of other different things, including like loading buttons. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this middle separator isn't entirely necessary. We can delete that. And then we can go into, help. Oh, we can delete both separators go into our VBox container and we can control that separation ourselves using a uh, the separation constant. So if I want it 24, it'll be 24. The reason why I like to add this separator, specifically the one above our first button, is to just keep it so it's moving. Uh, I guess it keeps it away from the actual title a little bit better. Now I'm going to, let's increase this to 32. Uh, let, let's double that even more and go 64. So 64 with two buttons feels pretty good. But if I wanted to add, I don't know, more buttons, you can see that we're getting a little bit too close to the top of the title, which means we can go back and we can lower the separation. We can add another separator if we want to, push it down and add another one, push it down. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. Personally, I just like using separators. So for now, we're only going to be needing two buttons. I'm going to rename the first button uh, give it the text of start game. I apparently turned my caps lock on. Start game. There we go. I'm going to rename this to the start underscore button. The next one or the final button will be the exit 
underscore button. I'm going to give this the text of exit underscore game, not underscore. Go. So we've got our text working. Let's press F5 and see how this looks. Oh, it's loading up our game still. And that's because you'll probably run into a similar situation where you've set a uh, other scene as your primary scene. I.e., when you press F5 or run game, it'll immediately load up that specific scene, not the main menu scene, right? If we press F6, however, it loads the current scene. And you'll see our buttons highlight, they work, they click, but they don't do actually anything yet. So let's go fix our first problem of not loading up the game title first. To do that, we're going to go into project, project settings. We're going to go down to application run. And where it says main scene, we're going to change this down into our main menu, main menu scene. And then we're going to hit close. Now, if I hit F5, it'll go into our game title. But as I said before, it doesn't do anything. We're kind of hard stuck here. So let's go to our main menu node. Let's add a script to it. Give this a class name of main menu. Now we're going to need a couple of on ready variables. First one will be our start button. So you can do this by dragging and then before you let go, control drop. Go to make sure these are typecasted as buttons. And then we're going to create one more on ready variable. And this is going to be for our starting underscore level. I'm going to set this equal to a preload. Preload basically uh, loads a specific scene or loads a specific uh, resource and keeps it in memory. So in this case, we want to preload our main uh, scene, so our main.tscn. If you want to avoid having to type stuff out like this, you can actually go and find your scene in your uh, file system. You can go down, 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 main, main TSCN. And all you have to do is drag this across into the parentheses and it'll create it for you. And I just thought this is an export. We don't want an export, we want an on ready. Now let's go and create our ready function. We are going to need to connect to the signals that the buttons have. Now, what signals do buttons have? Let's have a look. Click the button, go to node. We'll see it's button down, button up, button pressed, button toggled. So button down means the second you press the button, it will do something. Button up means the second the button is released, it will do something. And button pressed means whilst you are pressing the button down or holding the button down, it'll do something. Toggled is, uh, well, when you toggle the button, it'll do something, i.e. on, off, on, off, right? So in this case, we want to go and do button down. Now to do this, we're going to first write our start button. So start underscore button dot button down dot connect. Now we're going to connect to a on underscore button underscore down function. We are now going to go create that function. So on button down it a void return type then we're going to want to do something on button down for now let's hit pass or write pass let's go back into our ready function and then create another function for exit underscore button or create another signal connection for exit button dot button down dot connect on underscore exit underscore pressed create a function for on exit pressed make it void return, type in pass. Now, there is a two different naming method methods that I've used here. One is naming it directly after the signal on button down, whereas the other is naming it after the, uh, like what it's actually doing or what button is being pressed. In this case, on exit pressed, we know immediately that the exit button is being pressed. What do we want to do? Whereas on button down, which button is being pressed and where, right? Up here, you can see there's a start button, but somebody that's just looking at your code that doesn't, you know, that's not used to your code won't be able to really notice. So really good thing to do is naming it like on exit pressed. So in this case, we're going to name on button down, I'm going to rename it to on start underscore pressed. Now we're going to go down, rename the function that we just created for on button down, rename it to on start pressed. Now we have our two buttons and their signals linked up. So let's handle the on exit pressed first. That one's uh, easier. 
what you have to write now this is where godot gets uh really really cool it does a lot of this stuff kind of for you what you have to do is write get underscore tree so we're getting the scene tree and then we got to write dot quit and that's it that's all you need this will exit your game on button press so let's press f5 and go and click the uh, start button nothing's happening good we haven't coded anything if something did happen we should be very worried and now let's try exit and it immediately exits the game that's perfect that is exactly what we want and it's one quick line of code something i love about Godot is it really does have a lot of easy ways of uh, doing specific things specifically and the one of the best things to do and one of the easiest things that it does for you is loading other scenes so we've created a preload here now we're going to write get underscore tree dot change scene to packed so this is going to change the scene to a packed scene right now changing the scene is changing which scene we are currently in right now we are in the main menu scene we want to change this to a packed scene now you'll notice i didn't typecast this preload you can typecast this as packed scene because that's what it is it's a packed scene and then all we have to do is pass in start level inside of that changed pack scene and hit control s and save and now we'll press f5 run hit start game and you'll see that we load in immediately that that's it that's as simple and quick as you can do for creating a main menu scene and you'll notice that the godot engine itself is actually handling a lot of this stuff for us we could go and reinvent the wheel and create our own custom scene transition or way of changing scenes if we really want to and i'm very good at doing that sometimes on accident <laughs> and i will probably show that off at some point but that is the simple main menu created now as i said this is as far as we will go with this video on creating a main menu i will be covering options menus loading and saving data so we can load back into a game at a certain level level selection and i don't know maybe an achievements button to see what achievements your character does and doesn't have or saved games specifically like multiple saved games now as i said the reason why i can't go into that in one video is because that will take me a long time to uh kind of hammer out in a very very good way which means if i did try to shove it all into one video it would take a very very long time to watch through the whole thing so for now this is our main menu we will come back to this in a future video and we're going to add to it probably multiple times for multiple different fun things that way we can have a fully built out main menu that can do everything we wanted to anyway thank you for watching i will see you in the next video